call up uh, Pastor Des uh, to share the message with us this morning. And uh, just so that you know, on the live stream is going to cut out after uh, Pastor Des's message is done. So if you live in town, you can still run down here and catch, catch the rest of the service. All right? Get that? You guys catch that? Anyways, Lord, we thank you this morning. And uh, we thank you for Pastor Des. And I just pray that you would grace him to share what you've laid on his heart this morning, and I thank you for the family of people here that you've given us, and uh, this is a day to, to think about the larger church body as our family and as the business a little bit of the church, and uh, Lord, we're grateful for this house and for all those who attend here, and I just pray that today would be an encouragement and a blessing to all, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Michael. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you here. All right. Well, this morning, I don't even know what to expect. We haven't done this before. We haven't done it this way. An annual financial meeting as part of our Sunday morning service. We're going to have some fun, I think. Uh, yes. I would tell you to do something fun like check under your seat and maybe you'll win a prize, but, you know, we didn't do that. And so you can still look and you might be surprised by what you find underneath the seat. But we didn't plan anything, is my point. So, <laughs> oh my, where did that come from? Boy, I'm, I feel, I'm on a roll. So this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about finances. We're going to talk a little bit about our vision as a church, because the two, they really go hand in hand. And we're going to look today at some of the things we do as a church, and some of the reasons, uh, more importantly, why we actually do them. And then we're going to look at how, uh, through some of the reporting, how that actually gets done. And uh, if I could start off by saying, you know, wow, we have an amazing church here at Prairie Harvest. Over the years, God has just added and increased and opened doors for us supernaturally to be doing things that we're doing that really, you know, when we stop and think, it's like, how did that even happen? that we could be doing that, that we could be going to some of the places that we are, either locally, but even in the nations, um, just doors that God has opened for us. And we're just really uh, humbled by what God has done with us as a church. Uh, just over the years, as a group of people have been committed to the Lord and just been faithful to stand and to do the things that He's opened before us to do. And... Uh, so I'm going to kind of bounce back and forth between talking a little bit about some things about finances and some things about vision on our church. And I want to open with a scripture from 1 Timothy in chapter 6. And it says here, I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take a hold of the life that is truly life. And wow, that, that passage just says so much we could spend easily the morning just unpacking that. But... Uh, our finances are really important. And when we look at Jesus' teaching, um, money is a very important topic in, in the Scripture as well. Jesus taught way more on money than he did about love, more than he did about faith. Actually, it, if you look at it, um, where is it? Fewer than 500 Scriptures on faith, about 500 Scriptures on prayer, over 2,000 on the use of our money and wealth and how it's to be put in perspective. It's no wonder Jesus said, you can't serve both God and money. And, and he, he talked about it so much. And so we can't really um, talk about our faith, our, our relationship with God without eventually it gets to that place where it comes to our, our pocketbooks and, and how we live our financial life. And... Um, Martin Luther made this observation, and he was quoted saying this, there are three conversions necessary, the conversion of the heart, the conversion of the mind, and the conversion of the wallet. <laughs> 
And he said, when we experience the conversion of the wallet, suddenly we are freed from the chains of money and getting and needing. That first passage in Timothy talked about God providing things for our good pleasure, for our enjoyment. You know, our society gives itself to acquiring wealth so it can spend things on its own enjoyment, and we've become our own God in that area. Can I say that? Um, but Jesus, our Lord and Savior, wants to be the one that opens those doors of providing even the things that are for our enjoyment and our good pleasure. And when we begin to get that, what I've seen is God begins to open our hearts, begins to open our wallets, and we begin to, to sow into the kingdom of God, which is actually the very best investment that you can find on the planet. Because it doesn't just pay dividends here, but it says that we're, we're, we're receiving for eternity. What we sow in this life into the kingdom of God, out of love for God, out of the need, out of the things that he's placed before it, we will reap a benefit of that throughout eternity. It's a blessing. It's a, it's a dividend that doesn't fade away. And that is just amazing. And so that's a little talk on money. And it takes money to make a church work, just like anything else in this world. But what I want to look at really quickly here is why is prairie harvest here and what purpose do we serve in the world? You know, I think every church needs to ask itself that. You know, why do we exist? Why do we need to be here? There's lots of other churches in the community. There's lots of other churches uh, all around. Why do we exist? Why do we need to be here? And I believe two scriptures really sum up that for me. And the first one is from Matthew 22, verse 35 to 30, or pardon me, to 40. 35 to 40, it says, and one of them, an expert in the law, tested him, speaking of Jesus, with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. We are here to be able to know and experience the love and the goodness of God to know this love and experience his love, and then to give it willingly and freely back to him. We're also here to receive and experience his love and his kindness, his forgiveness, his mercy, and then to live willingly to give it freely to others. Being one that receives the love of God, it demands a response from our lives. You know, many times we think, well, Jesus did it all. I don't have to do anything. And, you know, there's an element of that that is 100% true. But let me tell you this. You cannot be touched by the love of God, experience his love, mercy, his forgiveness, his healing, his, his working in our hearts without it demanding a response back. And, and the responses that, that God is looking for is that, it would produce in us a desire to love God wholeheartedly, not just with our heart, not just with our mind, the strength also. You know what my strength is? My strength is what God has given me. What has He given me? He's given me every one of my mental faculties. He's given me a heart that, that loves the things it does and doesn't like so much the things it doesn't. He's given me the ability, the scripture says, to obtain wealth. He's given me the gifts that I can provide for myself. And it even says that all that I have is directly from God. All that I'm able to produce in my life. And so he says, I want a people that will willingly love me, even with their stuff and with these things, all that I've given them. And so it demands a response. And it's coupled with loving people loving others with that same love that we've received back from God. That's one part of it. The second reason we exist is found in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And this is Jesus speaking, and he, said, he came to them and he said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
and teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Out of that relationship of love, mercy, forgiveness that we've received, received, Jesus now, he appoints us as his followers to go. To go and to take what we've received and to, to take it to the nations, to take it to our communities, to give it away to others, to share the gospel and to make disciples of every nation, to make disciples of those here at home. Um, it says, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you, those things that the Lord has taught us, the things that he has revealed in us, the things that he taught in his word. We are not just to sit here and rejoice in the goodness of God and that our sins are forgiven, though that is wonderful and I don't lose sight of that, but we are also to endeavor to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, one that is growing in the knowledge and understanding of who he is and the claim that he has put on our lives and how as we walk in obedience to his word, life begins to open up for us in a whole new way. I tell you, when you start obeying God's word and not just knowing it in your mind, your life will be transformed and you will begin to experience the power of God and the working of God the life of the Holy Spirit in a way that you will never experience if you just stay a cerebral Christian, if I could put it that way. One who knows about God, but one does not, that does not practice these things. And, and we believe that God has called us to go out, to take the good news, and that our job isn't done until every place has received, until there's no work left to be done. Jesus said, this is my commission to you until the day that I return. And so in these two areas, we find the vision for this church. And so I want to say really quickly now, so how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked because we do that in a couple of ways. If you uh, drive into the front parking lot, and I'm not sure, I know everyone doesn't, we have the parking lot in the back as well, but if you come into the main parking lot off of uh, Independence Street here, you will see our church sign, and on it is written our church mission statement, which says, reaching our world with the love of God. And that is what we are about in many different ways, through many different avenues, some that are from internally here and many that are expressed through going out and doing things in, in the world outside of these church's walls. I'm going to ask that we put up the church um, ministries slide, if we could. Hold on that for a second, and then we'll put the second slide. Those are some of the things that we are doing more internally. I could read them. I could. It's just really hard. <laughs> Bloom. Care and discipleship. College and career. Compassionate care. Discipleship classes. Family ministries. Filipino community. Home groups. Kingdom kids. Men's ministry. Marriage mentoring. Wildfire youth. <laughs> Worship ministry. We can change the page now. Oh, my gosh. Greeting, coffee bar, newcomers, hospitality team, connect center, refreshment team, service transition team, opening and closing, building lockup, close up, special event cleanup, outside entry prep, multimedia, front of house sound systems, service directing, ushering, communion prep and serving, prayer teams, prophetic ministry team, live stream sound systems, live stream camera operations. And you know, we might even be missing something. But all these things that we do, and many of these things are internal things, some of them are external where we, we use them to go out. These are ways that we are fulfilling these first two commands of either loving God, loving one another, discipling and growing one another, or preparing to go out. Um, I don't think we saw dinner church on there. What? 
we've got a little issue in the front row here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a little, a little nervous here. We, we have another slide, honey, and it's called Ministry Partners. Could we get that up before we... Yeah. Whew! Is that what you were looking for? Okay. All right. Here are some of our ministry partners, which I was just trying to bring a little differentiation between the two. Bruno's Place, Prairie Harvest Employment Program, Love Lives Here. Uh, Madge Lake Bible Camp, The Rock 98.5, Bridges for Peace, Lift Evangel Evangelistic Ministries, Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, Philippine Frontline Ministries, National House of Prayer, Our Village Uganda, and Foursquare Children of Promise, Cambodia. Dinner Church could go on there too. <laughs> Under Bruno's place, yes it could. But those are some of the things that we are doing that push outside of the walls of this church. But folks, they are in response to these two scriptures we talked about. We have each of us, I believe when we look at the scriptures, we have a personal responsibility to take the message of the gospel to those that don't know it and to take it to other nations of the world. It, it's a command that Jesus made. And in Acts 1 verse 8, he said to his disciples, when he talked to them about receiving the Holy Spirit, he said, you will receive the Holy Spirit and, and you will receive power. Power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts, uttermost parts of the earth. The call is upon us to take the gospel and the message, and to make disciples, and to see churches planted. Uh, this is part of the mandate that Jesus gave every one of us as a disciple. And there is a, there is a weight that is to rest on each one of us as members of the body of Christ in how are we helping to fulfill these mandates? How are we helping to raise up disciples? Because Jesus didn't say, go and make converts of every nation. Go and just make converts. You know, get them to say a prayer and then, whew, your job is done. He said, no, preach the gospel, make disciples. I want you to be actively involved in the process of teaching people how to grow in their walk in Christ, how to become young and to grow into maturity so that they are willingly giving their lives for serving me too. And it's, it's a mandate that we take personally here as a church, both of those things. And, you know, I could easily add on there, I just returned from Cambodia, Vietnam, and uh, man, Vietnam is calling right now. There's another place. We've sown into it in the past, and they're, they're needing more. Now, that's another place, and, and God opens these things up before us, and he says, will you go? Will you respond? And I tell you, um, our job is to have a willing heart but many times it also takes that conversion of our wallet because in many of these places, the believers there, they don't have the resources to do the things that we do here. I know I was greatly encouraged in Vietnam talking to the, the leader of, of one of the networks that is coming into LifeLinks now, Gospel of Life Fellowship, and he's saying this is our goal, that when you guys come, that we could help you with all of your ground expenses. We would, our, our first goal is that we could help you um, to feed you and help you get a place to stay and, and travel you around because they haven't even been able to do that as of yet. But he said that's our goal, but our goal in the future is that we would be able to pay your way here and that you could come and that this wouldn't cost you. But right now, many of these nations are, are poor, they're, they're, the struggles are real, the church is per persecuted, um, they need help. We are the rich that 1 Timothy is talking about. Believe it or not, you are richer than probably 90% of the rest of the world's population. And God has a call on us to help and to reach out. I just want to share really briefly a testimony here. I've asked uh, our youth pastor, uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you to come quickly and just share a little bit about what one of our in-house ministries is doing and the life of, of God that's just upon that here. So, Mike. Thank you so much, Des. Um, so, 
I've had the great uh, privilege and uh, responsibility of ministering to the youth of this church and this community over the past, it'll be two years pretty soon. And uh, the focus has been uh, twofold. One being fostering relationship and fellowship within the community already here. And I like to think that we've done that rather well and we've been growing and seeing uh, fresh faces uh, come and go within the youth. And we strive to instill in them the conviction to answer some very key questions once they are no longer with us as youth, once they become adults, to be able to answer those questions firmly, to know who God is, how to pray, how to worship, to know who they are, their identity, to know their purpose. And we're pressing into a couple key things right now, actually. We're in the middle of a season focusing on prayer. Over the summer, we're uh, kick-starting with uh, Alpha once again. We did Alpha last year, although this year is going to look a little bit different. And I would like very much to see the youth coming with me and partnering with me on that ministry. And what Alpha does is it is a place for atheists and agnostic people to come and voice their opinions and ask questions. It's a safe place to introduce them to Christ. It is a key component of our outreach as a youth ministry. And what's really exciting about that is it's centered around a free meal. And if you feed them, they will come. Uh, something we've learned here. Uh, so I'm actually going to be asking uh, for partners within our church to, uh, to help us in, in feeding people, and I'll be asking help from the youth to help facilitate these discussions, to create a safe atmosphere for people to come. Uh, we also have uh, some very exciting news about our, uh, our reball equipment. It's reusable paintball. It's not paintball at all. It's just rubber balls. It's very, very fun. Uh, and the church has been blessed years and years and years ago with tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. And I, feel, I felt very, very uh, strongly from God that we must use the tools that we have to engage with people on their level. And it's a very, very fun activity. But I'm also creating a ministry around it which can focus us with, on a message called AIM, Living Your Life with Purpose. And I feel like right now a lot of people crave purpose. They crave a reason for doing the things they do. They crave that, uh, that intent. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so what we're trying to do here is to shift focus. Now that we've been developing that fellowship within, we're going to now take that, what we know, that we know from God, and share it with the community. Through Reball, through Alpha, um, we're going to be going out and making disciples because we, they don't have to wait to be adults to do that. So thank you. Right on. Thanks, Mike. And uh, there's so many different things that we're, we're doing as a church right now. The youth is really exciting. I know the youth have just purchased a bus as well, which is also really exciting because they're going to be on the road doing a lot of different things, going to a lot of different places, and it's just been really exciting to see. Dinner Church is another thing that this year is a new ministry, a new way for us getting out. God's opened a door through Bruno's place, that uh, the 24-hour emergency shelter that the church operates uh, a ministry there, and now once a month we have a group from the church that is going out, preparing a meal, and uh, just using that as an opportunity to sit down with the people who come, to engage them in conversation, and to begin to encourage, to pray for them, and we're believing it's going to lead to sharing Christ with them as well. And just, it's been really exciting. We've only done two of them so far. The next one is uh, April 23rd, and uh, I think the team is having at least as much fun as those who are receiving the meal. And so uh, just some open doors. But again, God has just opened doors for us not to be static, but to get out and to do things. And that's what his church is all about. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, he was talking about food, shelter, clothing that we need, 
He will provide for us. And so it's our belief that every believer has a call and has gifts and talents, abilities, resources that are needed in fulfilling the Great Commission. The local church is the place where you are to employ those things. And God promises that as you make His business the priority in your life, He will make the needs in your life a priority of His. And so I encourage you, be generous to the Lord. Be rich in God. And uh, I'm going to invite Stefan to come up now. He's going to share some of the nuts and bolts of who we are as a, as a church financially over this past year. Let's welcome him. Okay. Yeah, right. We're, uh, we're going to say goodbye to all of our live stream uh, friends. So like Michael mentioned, if you're on the live stream and you want to hustle down here, We'll see you soon. So we'll cut that off, thank you. So yeah, now for the fun part. Um, thank you, Pastor Des. I'm in this really awkward phase of like, can't read, like, so I, this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but I'm gonna do the best I can. So first of all, I guess I just wanna say, uh, good morning, my, my name is Stefan Bimack. I am a member of the eldership team here, I have been for I guess a dozen years, um, also on the board of directors. And I just want to take a moment to introduce our board of directors to you. They're not a group that gets a lot of attention throughout the year, but uh, first of all, the uh, formidable Elwin Schindel, please stand up. <laughs> Elwin. Um, the dynamic duo, Al and Doreen McDonald. Um, the uh, I don't rock steady I guess I would say brains like the computer Clint Shepard um, and Janelle Oshui where did she go she is the fearless traveler she travels on icy roads in the middle of January to attend meetings so we thank you for all your uh, all the kilometers you put on your car to come and, and join our meetings and the newest member of our team uh, Gary Mann. Where did he go? He was here. There he is. Thanks, Gary. And also, Harold Fries, who is currently on sabbatical. He isn't here today. He's uh, enjoying his, his grandkids, but I spoke with him, and uh, he will be... He's currently on sabbatical from the team, but... So, yeah, give Harold a hand, too. So, first, I want to say... Um, and I'm just so blessed by the generosity of this church. I, I really am. I probably have, man, this is awkward. Like, I can't see you. How, how do you do this? Do you, do you keep them down like this and then read? I want to read. I want to, like, this is really awkward. But I'm very blessed by the generosity. Like, I probably have the closest view of our finances and have for a number of years being on the board and working closely even when uh, our bookkeeper left about a dozen, half a dozen years ago. I took over doing the books, and, and it's, it's a real blessing just to see the faithful giving of so many. Um, and I just thank you, you know. And I like, just give yourselves a hand because you're a, a generous bunch. So the giving from all of us has solely supported the vision and ministry from this family that has been a very real blessing to the community and area and to really many parts of the world for 25 years. There's, there's no other way that this church is funded. It is solely by the giving from all of us in this family. Um, and because of the generous giving of finances, time, and talent, by God's grace, we have truly begun to do what we have always believed. And, you know, Des mentioned it. And it was on my heart this morning too, Des, reaching the world with the love of God, that which is on our sign in the front and the back, and it's like that, that was impressed upon my heart this morning, so it was neat that you mentioned it. And that is happening because the people here are giving. Um, so we have completed our annual charity audit it's a, and a financial statement that has been issued by Baker Tilly, accounting firm in Yorkton. The format of that statement, in particular the way the revenues and expenses are shown, uh, make it less relevant or important for us and even for the board to understanding the management 
to understand and manage our church finances, they literally, like everything is lumped together. All of the revenues and expenses are lumped together. So just to give you a picture of what that looks like, we have our revenue for 2023 is over just over $2 million. But that includes all of the grants that came in for Bruno's Place that run uh, the community center over there. The expenses for the year are just under $2 million. So the little bit of money that is revenue was basically invested into capital assets. But that statement itself isn't really useful for us to understand, manage, our finances on a daily basis. So what I want to look at today is what we actually, as a board of directors, how we operate and what we look at. And it's called fund-based accounting. Our software allows for it. It's, it's very common for charities to operate that way. And because with so many different projects, so many different things happening, we categorize and put money in and out of funds. And that's how we understand it. So we're going to look at some of that today. Um, but just want to mention, in the Baker Tilly report, uh, basically they indicate that the issue, uh, that the financial statement presents fairly the financial position of our organization as of December 31st, 2023, in accordance with the Canadian Accounting Standards for Nonprofit Organizations. I also want to say um, that anybody, anybody and everybody is invited to come and have a closer look at that financial statement. So if that's something that you would like to come and have a look at, please see me. Uh, we can make an appointment, we could sit down and go through it. Uh, but I want to warn you, if you decide to do that, you may well end up on the board of directors and attending <laughs> min meetings. So um, if you can understand it, you'll, you'll definitely earn yourself a job here. So, um, so Again, we'll put up a slide in a, in a second here. And actually, sorry, I, can you guys, the, I, I want the board to hand out that, that piece of paper now. I do have a, a handout for everybody to take home and to look at as we go through the slides. Um, just one second. We'll give a second for them to hand out those. Okay, so... For our purposes, again, like I said, we use the fund-based accounting. And essentially what we do is we put all of our giving. Does everybody have one? If you haven't got one, maybe just put up your hand. Everybody's got one? Oh, Pastor Desmond would like one. Okay. All right. So we put everything into two categories. So you don't need to look at the sheet right now. I know it's going to be a bit distracting, but, but right now um, I, I, I want everybody to try and understand that there, there is two main categories that all of our uh, giving goes into, and we categorize it into the general fund, and the general fund is money that is given without designation or the gen that meets the general needs of the church. So generally this is called the tithe. What, what the biblical language around this would be the tithe, and this is money that is used for our budget and to pay for the operational expenses. Great idea, May. Lights would be great, yeah. So again, the general fund is money uh, that would be used to pay the operational expenses of the church, including wages, utilities, insurance, office admin, building supplies, maintenance, and it is also the, the, where we budget the money from and take it from in order to... Uh, pass along and support other ministries. Okay, so two categories. One, the general fund. Second, it would be designated funds. So on your offering envelope, if you designate money to, uh, right now we have a project, the bus. Uh, Mike Evans, you are doing fundraising for the youth bus. So if you put on an offering envelope, $200 under other, and you put youth bus, that will be designated funds. We cannot the board uh, and the directs and with the finances, with the eldership group, we cannot use that money to pay the power bill or pay wages. That will be specifically set aside and given directly to the youth and towards the bus. Is that clear? Clear as mud? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's hard for me to know because we are always looking at this, so I'm, you know, I want to make sure it's translating and clear to everybody else, but... So the, it's those two categories that we use to understand and manage our financial position. So we'll break this down a little bit further in a minute. 
But what the first thing I want to do is look at the general fund, as this is the fund that we pay the closest attention to, and it's the most clear indication concerning the strength of our financial position and our ability to function. This is how we determine our budget, and this is the fund from which we manage the operational costs of the church. So we'll put up that slide. It is actually, if you can just skip to number two, would be good. I think it's the second slide. Uh, no, it should be second general fund giving picture, that one. So, okay, so that is the money that was given, the tie that was given to the church. So there's two years there, there's 2022 in the blue. So the total from 2022 giving to general that was used for the, just for the budget and the operations of the church was $466,000 approximately. And then 2023, you can see an increase in each of the months. This chart, which, and actually I apologize, when I was introducing the board, I needed to mention Lisa, who is our bookkeeper and does a wonderful job. Give Lisa a hand. We have, we have never had a bookkeeper that's been able to produce this kind of chart for us. So that in itself is worthy of recognition. Thank you, Lisa, because it, it is really good. And, you, and when we see this, you know, we're encouraged to see. So I, like I mentioned, 2022, our overall giving to general was about, well, just under 467,000, actually. But then 2023, which is the year we're most concerned about right now. Well, actually, we're more concerned about 2024, but we're looking at 2023. It was 495,000. So it was an increase of about $30,000. And you can see that. But look at how interesting it is. And, you know, the, the challenge it is for the board to manage the budget when throughout the year we're under budget, under budget, under budget, and we're getting a little nervous. But look at December, what happens every December, you know. And we've kind of learned to count on that, I guess, because, so, you know, we, our nerves are pretty, pretty steady nowadays. We know December is going to make up a lot because you know, December's giving is almost like three months. So it makes up for a lot of those shortfalls throughout the year. Um, the green there is 2024, and that is probably the most encouraging thing about this chart for me and for the board in particular. There's increase right, right off the bat in the first three years, or three, first three months. Um, I do want to say that, uh, is it okay to say like, you know, I say BC, but PC, pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, we were, uh, the giving in 2019 and even 2020, right at the start of COVID, was much higher, actually. It was significant. Like, during those years, uh, with a much smaller budget and the expenses being much lower, uh, the giving was about 550000 to general. So during those years, we actually we're able to uh, really set aside some money. And we created, we had a uh, sort of a reserve fund that, that unfortunately now throughout 2022-23, we've basically uh, used up most of that reserve to sort of balance um, in the last couple of years. So we're really prayerful and believing, you know, God has always been so faithful to us. So the, we just know that we're gonna be okay and that God is, is really going to direct and provide. I love provision, and Des shared vision, right? Provision, it's for the vision. And it's like Desmond, Pastor Desmond, you know, did a good job of sharing the vision of this house. We have a vision to reach the world around us, our community, the people around us, even to Cambodia, Uganda, with the, with the love of God. And it's like provision for the vision. So we believe that as we share the vision, as we walk in that, God will provide. Okay, so, how am I doing here for time? I'm okay. I kind of go all over the place here. So, we are going to have a short little uh, question and answer at the end. So, if you do have any questions, uh, just sit on them for a few minutes. We're, we, this won't be too long. We'll get to them shortly. But I just want to go through, you know, this general fund here. Uh, a few comments I wanted to make. Just that the increase in 2024 is, is positive. We're encouraged by that. 
Um, and also, I'm, I guess I did make the comment about our reserves being used up going into this year. So let's move on to the next slide. Now, unfortunately, this one is kind of broken up a little bit. But this, pardon me? Yeah, it's all together on the handout. So you do have it on your handout. Um, it didn't fit on the screen. But this is our, this is our monthly budget. And just some things I want to draw attention to here. Like, in biblical language, um, the designated funds that you see there, that would be called, I should have mentioned this earlier, it would be called, like, the offerings, right? So the general fund, tithes, designated funds, if you give to youth or Madge Lake or Uganda, that would be considered offerings. That's the bi biblical language of, of behind those two categories. And that's kind of what we work with. But this is our budget. So you can see... Uh, for 2023, um, we, so this comes out of the general fund. We, we take the money from the general fund and form our budget. So under our operating funds, we have wages, general admin, utilities, resource and training. And, you know, unfortunately, 2023, we saw costs really go up. And, and we're, em we're empathetic, and we know that, that's, that you've all experienced that same thing in your homes, too. We realize that, very, you know, very much. Um, but we did spend more than our budget in quite a few categories there, wages, utilities, uh, general and men. So then also as part of our budget, we take from the general fund and put into these designated funds. So you can skip ahead to the next few slides. And then, yeah, so those are all the, those are all the ministries that we put money into from the general fund, uh, the radio sponsorship, ministry travel, worship teams, youth, Kingdom Kids, Benevolent, Full Gospel, Madge Lake. Those are our monthly support for those ministries. And then the last one, too, if you want to put that up. So that's a big glaring red number, or highlighted red. But again, you know, God was faithful. And, you know, in, in the wisdom of God that we were able to build up that significant surplus pre-COVID to get us through some leaner years, and now we're seeing great uh, growth again. You know, I'm encouraged by that, and, and I really believe that, you know, we'll continue to see growth as we just fulfill the vision of the house. So I don't really think there's anything more. Again, there's the total to give into general fund, the 495 or just under that. Um, so it was under budget, about $80,000. I guess just one note on that too. It does seem like a lot, you know, when you think of eighty thousand dollars. Like you're certainly, if you were short that in your household, you'd be <laughs> quite alarmed. But you know what? That isn't. It isn't a big number, because you know when you when, like I think now, um, the numbers of people that attend this church. Like I just, if I can share. Um, Recently, we, I think we have 180 people that are volunteering regularly at this church. That is, that is astounding. That is an incredible number. And, and I believe, you know, we don't see people every Sunday, and, and maybe that's just the nature of kind of the way things are going. But I think there's close to 400 people that do attend this church and give to this church and call this church home. So that, that is a real blessing. We have a lot of people, and... Um, you know, Elwin, I'll, I'll call you up now because you just wanted to share a quick, a quick word on that, on proportionate giving. But, you know, the increase in 2024 is a real encouragement to us. And like I said, although that shortfall looks big, I just really believe that as each of us and our families, we bring our, our fish and our loaves, right? God multiplies it as we all bring what we have in our hands. So um, I'm a strong advocate not just for the tithe, actually. I'm a strong advocate for the tithe as a starting point. I, I don't even, you know, I'm a tithe plus, plus. Like, I just think that God really wants to bless us. Like, he really wants to bless you and see increase. And, and, and just in that intimate walk with him, I believe that finances are a big part of trusting him. It's part of, part of the leverage he really used in my life to cause me to grow and trust him. And, you know... And it's always difficult to stand up here as a leader in the church and talk about finances because 
I'm sure it feels at times like we're, you know, trying to say, come on, you know, but it's like the heart of the leadership here and the, our heart cry is just to see grow, you be blessed in your family, to see the community be blessed. It's not that, you know, you would just give your money. The, the, the word says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So that's the heart is to see everybody grow and mature in, in, in understanding and growing in the grace of God. And wherever you're at, wherever you're at, it doesn't matter. There's no judgment or condemnation. We encourage people to come and talk. That's, come and talk to us if you have questions about it or concerns about it. We are open, and we want everybody to know that our doors are open if you'd like to come and talk about finances or the tithe or offerings or whatever it is. Our doors are open to talk more about it. So, Alan, please come forward. I just would like you to share what you had on your heart. You know, uh, there's a beautiful strategy. It's uh, simple, and yet it's profound. And I call it a kingdom principle. Um, it's, this strategy is private, it's confidential, it's totally voluntary, and it's absolutely under no compulsion. Maybe it's a secret. I don't know, because uh, we don't totally embrace it. But uh, let me un unpack this, this secret a little bit. It is proportionate giving. Not giving, uh, not equal giving, but it's proportionate to your income. And uh, the Bible calls it the tithe. I actually Googled it. It's 10% of your income. And uh, we need to give, uh, you know, consistently, monthly, if possible. I know that isn't always, always possible. And this strategy has a profound consequence in meeting our financial goals and our vision. It's absolutely uh, essential. And it's a, like I said, it's a, it's only God could come up with this simple, profound strategy. Uh, give consistently monthly if possible. I know for many of you that's not, that is not possible because your income, uh, you know, uh, fluctuates throughout the year. And uh, the scriptures certainly speak of uh, the blessings of generosity and faithfulness. And, uh, you know, uh, we're precious in God's sight. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Alwyn. Um, okay, so we are going to open up a little bit of time now for just... We don't want to, I'm going to give the microphone to Gary. Is this microphone on? It's the green mic. So Gary is going to run around if you have questions, just so we can all hear. But uh, we've got about a you know, five-minute window or so. If there are any uh, questions at all regarding the, you know, anything that was shown, I can see Michelle's over there. So we'll start with her. And I'm just going to leave now. No, I'm just kidding. Morning. So I'm just wondering, kind of purely numbers, is the projection for 24, 2024, considering the first three months, is the projection looking good to cover the shortfall for 2023? The, the shortfall for 2023 has already been covered by the surpluses from previous years. Sorry if I, I was trying to express that. Be, where the PC or pre-COVID giving, we had money set aside, yeah. and so that shortfall has been cleared already. Wonderful. Yeah. So then is the, considering the first three months, is the projection looking similar to pre-COVID totals? Yeah, that's a good, yeah, I would say that. And that's, Comparable? that's our, we continue to pray and believe and trust God because he's the one that provides and directs us, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, there's a question right there. Good. What is all included in general admin? Yeah, a lot, actually. Um, Lisa, <laughs> help. Uh, it's been a while since I've done, it's been probably three years since I've done the books, but general administration uh, would include, there's, yeah, some, well, some of our fees, I know, like, uh, we, we actually, um, pay to LifeLinks in our parent organization, our covering organization. So any of those um, annual fees come out of there. Um, 
Yeah, there's a ton of um, licensing, subscription fees. It's actually uh, it's significant because it, I can't remember whatever the amount is there, but it is significant. Um, pardon me? Website. Yeah, website subscription fees. Um, yeah, there is, a, there is a lot under general men. Probably some, well, there is a different category for office supplies, I believe. Insurance may come out of there, or is that a utilities? I can't remember exactly which that comes out of, but where is this? Yeah, I don't have the breakdown with me, but, but just to give you an idea, I think that gives you a general idea. Any other questions? Yeah, the administrative costs and stuff like that has just gone up, like, you know, significantly. Any other questions? If you got, yeah. Oh, for the minutes, first name, sorry. Kathy, yeah, we've got that. Yeah, our, our uh, computer-brained uh, minute man here needs, needs your name. Thank you, Clint. <laughs> Should have given Clint recognition for taking minutes. He's, he's a very good minute taker. Anyone else? Any other questions? Oh, Julia. Julia. Um, regarding the reserve, um, if someone would like to make a check out, can you make it out to the reserve and that will just go in there? Because I realize that. Um, Am I understanding correctly that the reserve is, um, after you're done doing all your budgeting, whatever left, go there? But what if I want to contribute directly to the reserve, just like the designated funds? Do you have that? Um, Can you? Can I mean, <laughs> we would never turn away money, I guess, if that's a good way of answering that. <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose that, I mean, I, I think our, our greatest needs, you know, there's, there's always going to be projects like the, like the youth bus. We had the big ki kitchen reno that came up. There's, you know, the Bruno's Place dinner church and reno. there's always s those designated things that come up. But really year after year after year, our, you know, biggest needs have always been in the area of just general giving to meet our, our needs for... Um, wages and utilities and so on and so forth and because those in, those costs are increasing you know that that's probably the most significant area of need but if somebody wanted to give money into an area and say hey this that would basically be going into the general to cover off at the end of the year any shortfall or into that reserve yeah that that would be accepted mm -hmm. anybody else have any questions? No? We're good? You guys are such a polite bunch. You don't want to put me on the spot and make me sweat any more than I am? Pardon me? Yeah, that we're available? Yeah, and that's, that's just one of the most, you know, again, the, the conversation around finances, like, I know, like, we're not, you know, we're not, we understand how difficult it can be. And, we know that things have been challenging at different times for different people, and especially this is a, you know, we're in a season where the finances are difficult and for everybody's home. But we want to make sure more than anything that you understand that we want to be available to have conversations about this with you. It's not a judgment. It's not you have to do this to shake, because we're not interested in compelling anybody to do anything. As Elwin said, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We're interested in people growing, uh, uh, being a part of the family, attaching to the vision and just coming in and being a part of it. So it's not, no matter where you're at in your giving, you have a place here. Like, we want you to be part of this family. And it doesn't matter where you're at in your giving. Yeah, we want you to grow for your own sake and just to be part of the family. But it, no matter where you're at with that, there is no condemnation. There is no judgment. We, you know, you're fully accepted and fully loved. And like Owen said, you're precious in the sight of God, no matter where you're at with it. So God bless you in that. And uh, if there isn't any more questions, Doreen, would you come? Oh, sorry. Oh, I can't see you way over in the corner. Doreen, would you come up just so we're... Seed cloud. Oh, of course, seed cloud. 
of course, every year. We thought we got rid of it actually this year because because we're tired. I'm tired of answering these questions. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. It was it was a, years and years and years ago. There was a significant donation that came in to the church for new projects. It was and they they that was kind of the the vision. It came out of a dream, I think, actually. And it was like so we labeled the fund Seed Cloud, and it was just something that you know to start something new. And so we used that fund for years. To, I think we started our kids' ministry uh, out of the Seed Cloud Fund. Um, maybe even, I think, the youth, the new youth uh, pastor, Mike Evans. That's how we started to pay his wage. And so it's been used to start several projects, p create positions and stuff like that over the years. Um, it was one of the funds we actually used to meet that shortfall. So we've basically drained it now and closed it. So it won't, you won't see it next year. So that's, this will be the last time I get to answer these questions. Yeah, maybe. I guess so. We, again, we won't turn away money. So if you want to donate to Seed Cloud, we'll have to revive it, and there's nothing we can do about it. Anything else? No? Okay. I'm, I had asked Doreen just to kind of pray a blessing and, and close us in prayer. Do you have something, Cheryl? Cheryl, got a question? Okay, so Dreen's just going to come up and do that. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we read in your scriptures that um, without direction, your people perish. And Lord, we just thank you, God, for clear direction and clear vision this morning. Lord, we just thank you that um, we have a vision here at Prairie Harvest, a vision to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, I just pray that uh, you would bless these people, Lord. We just thank you for their giving and for their loving and for their caring hearts. And Lord, continue to pour out your vision on us. Help us to see others as you see them, Lord. And we just pray that uh, you would go with us now and that you would, uh, that this has not been a heavy uh, message, but a, a message of hope and care for our, our community, for, for us, and for those that we love. And now we just ask that you would go with us and bless us and keep us in your walk all the days of our lives. We just thank you in Jesus' name.